I'm Captain Tripp for Boat Test, and I can tell you from first-hand experience that setting out before dawn for a day of fishing makes me and most people I know very excited about the adventure to come. Making it even more exciting for this Everglades crew is the fact that they're going out in the new Everglades 315 center console. This new Everglades is powered by twin 400 horsepower Mercury V10 engines, a first for Everglades. The 315 has a length overall with the engines of 33 foot 9 inches, a beam of 10 foot 4, and a draft of 2 foot 3 with engines up. The transom height is 30 inches, the displacement 14,250 pounds, fully laden with gear and 300 gallons of fuel. Dead rise at the transom is 25 degrees, the deepest of any boat in the class. Once in blue water, our five anglers set the outriggers and start preparing their baits for the first troll. Everglades Boats was founded in 1997 and thanks to founder Bob Doherty, its DNA goes back to the early days of center consoles. Ever since inception, Everglades has been one of the most innovative center console builders. That's why before we take our walk through the boat, I want to show what can't be seen on deck. And they are the two most important aspects of this boat in my opinion. The boat's construction and our bottom shape. The centerpiece of this boat's construction is Everglades patented ram cap process utilizing pre-molded high density foam blocks three times stronger than the industry norm that precisely fit between the hull and the liner. It's this foam construction method that makes the 315 unsinkable, but also will make our float level if swamped. Only a few brands can say that, and Everglades is one of them. Fiberglass is sprayed between the hull and the foam, and the three elements are then vacuum fastened together and cured over 24 hours into one solid rigid unit. According to Everglades, the process is designed to absorb energy before it reaches the deck. There's no boat built on earth like her. Most boat builders have their wiring harnesses built by outside vendors, but Everglades builds all of theirs in-house and even torques the screws in the electrical bus to industry specs and marks them for quick visual inspection. Everglades has its own metal shop that makes all of its aluminum components and welds them together to assure high quality workmanship. Her variable dead rise hull shape is notable. It has a high dead rise at the bow and then warps to 25 degrees dead rise at the transom to maximize comfort in choppy conditions when running at speed. Baits are being prepared. Trolling continues with six to eight lines out from rods high, low, and to the sides. Fish on! This is the first hookup of the day and everyone is excited and in a rush to bring this critter aboard. Now the eager angler has moved to the side of the boat to bring the fish in. Whoops, fish off. While our anglers are hard at work trying to raise more fish, let's zero in on the features of the new 315. I'm going to divide those aspects of the boat into three categories. One, general operation features, two, family friendly attributes, and three, fishability. Heading the list of general operation features is the helm. It's a masterpiece in simplicity. The console is dominated by two 22-inch Garmin touchscreens. Virtually everything on the boat and engine is monitored here and can be controlled by a touch. To the right of the wheel are the engine controls with joystick and optional Seakeeper gyro and interceptor controls, two cup holders, and a deep tray for stuff. That is except for eight buttons on a pad to the left of the wheel that are redundant with screen controls for instant activation. On top of the console, is a recessed tray with non-skid rubber to hold stuff in place, two induction recharging pads, a properly mounted compass, and drain holes that lead overboard, not to the bilge. The ignition switches are around the corner in the locked head compartment. The VHF radio, Seakeeper controls, stereo, and other controls are in a fiberglass box molded into the overhead. One look forward will reveal a patented center window which, at the touch of a button, lowers for added airflow and better visibility in fog. On the deck is an anti-fatigue mat and a platform folds down for those who need an extra 4 inches of height for better visibility forward. 
This boat has the upgraded helm and companion seats that slide fore and aft and have dense foam supports on the sides giving the feeling of sitting in the seats rather than on them. Buyers of all boats, no matter what the brand, should carefully inspect the boat's mechanical room. ABYC standards require that all through holes below the waterline have ball valves or seacocks that can be easily reached. Not surprisingly, the 315 mechanical room is a textbook example of doing everything right. I particularly like the bilge sump with two bilge pumps. The Everglades 315 has ground tackle that is particularly easy to reach standing up because there is no seat in front. The electric windlass, anchor, chain, and road all come standard. Importantly, there is good access to the anchor locker to unsnarl any rat's nest. Under the two chaise lounges forward of the console is a large utility compartment that has a dedicated place to store the table and the cutting board, as well as two fenders and other gear. Something we rarely see are storage compartments in the gunnels. The 315 has four, and they're ideal for Mori lines and other gear. The whole boat has just one level deck and the side decks are wide. After trolling unsuccessfully, our Everglades crew have decided to anchor. Now with bait on, Emily drops her bait deep to fish just off the bottom. Another guest angler is helped by the mate who rigs up a bait and cuts the tail off to keep it from spinning. Fish on! This looks like it could be a nice sized fish, but there is a lot of line out, so while it's being reeled in, let's look at the family friendly features of this boat. Possibly the most family friendly feature of the 315 is the two part transom seat, made possible by moving the transom door to the port side. The seats can comfortably seat four people facing forward and in rough conditions this is the most comfortable place. Opposite and abaft the helm is mezzanine seating with armrests, ideal for watching the baits in comfort. On the transom is a pull out shower to wash down swimmers or clean off the bait prep tray. Forward in the starboard side of the console is a second pull-out shower. Everyone aboard will appreciate the spacious head with 6 foot 2 inches of headroom. Note that two steps with non-skid make it easy to get in and out of this compartment. Over the electric head is a teak seat which will come in handy when changing clothes or putting the kids inside to stay dry during a summer squall. There's a sink and a convenient place for required Coast Guard items behind teak rails and below there's a place to stow cushions. Note that this lockable head had holders for four rods in the deck. In front of the console are two comfortable chaise lounge seats. Forward, there are port and starboard bench seats. A table can be placed between them for alfresco dining or sundown cocktails. Take the cushions off and drop the table down to create a large casting platform. That's our first fishing feature. While we're up here, let's look at the 80 gallon insulated fish box with macerator. Meat fishermen will love the whole capacity for fish with two more 40 gallon insulated fish boxes in the cockpit deck aft for a total of 160 gallons in three boxes. As can be seen, the cockpit is large and there's plenty of room for three anglers and a mate all working together. Port and starboard in the transom are twin 25 gallon blue live wells with rounded corners, recirculating pumps, and a clear pressure tight lid. There are a couple of places for tackle boxes, including under the mezzanine seat where there's a tub with an optional freezer plate. Everglades provides a convenient bait prep tray that can be put in any of the rod holders in the boat's cap rails or transom. There are the requisite in gunnel rod racks over twin tow rails, port and starboard. Power ports for downriggers are in the gunnels in the port and starboard quarters. And meanwhile, back at the boat, Emily still has the fish hooked up. One of the crew thinks it might be a shark because whatever is on the end of the line is putting up a good fight. This is when the tow rails and the bolsters come in handy. Now moving to the port quarter, victory looks close at hand. It's no shark. As Emily brings a big red snapper close to the side of the boat, the mate opens the side door which folds flush to the gunnel. Watch as Emily keeps her rod tip high and the mate reaches down and grabs the snapper by its tail and easily brings it through the door. This is something he could never have done on a center console with a traditional transom door. There's nothing quite like successfully landing a large fish to give an angler a feeling of accomplishment.
We hope you liked our look at the new Everglades 315 center console. And remember that life is better on a boat. Oh,